Right, we've got some offset silencers to build, so I thought this is a good opportunity to go through what an offset silencer is, why you might need one, and then how we make them, which makes them a bit a bit better than traditional ways, I guess. Um, we're not the only company that do them like this, but this is definitely the best way, and you'll find that a lot of companies probably don't do them this way, and won't tell you they don't do them this way, because they probably don't, there's a better way of doing them. So, to get into the details, we've got two to make. Um, we've got one six inch diameter silencer and one eight inch diameter. So this is, this is a big boy one. Um, so, in terms of offsets, we offer what are three different kinds of offset, really. So, we offer a center to offset, a diagonal offset, and then a parallel offset. So, a center to offset is where we use a center hole baffle on one end and then a offset hole baffle on the other end. So the tube kind of runs in straight, two bends and then out at an angle, uh, out straight. So, so the point I'm trying to make in this video is that the silencers should, if we assemble them correctly, um, the tube should come out perfectly parallel and straight as it would do in a center to center normal straight through silencer but we're going to do this offset without any restrictions without any kind of uh, internal baffling or anything like that and then we also offer the um, diagonal offset which is where we would use two offset baffles so we'd have an offset on the one side and then another offset on the other so that um, tube would run through there bend once bend again and come out the other end and then the final version we offer is what we call a parallel offset. So that's where we use two offset baffles and the tube just runs straight through. So we'll get into making them. The first thing we need to do is obviously cut some tube down and get the bender set up. Right, so we've got some perforated tube cut down now and got it deburred. Obviously, we always want to start with a nice clean piece of tube. Once we've uh, once we cut it down and got it deburred, it's just a case of putting it in the bender, just like we normally would. We can bend perforated tube. It's um, it's a bit trickier to bend. There's a lot of things you have to be careful of. Obviously, it's not as uh, it's not got the same structural integrity as a, a solid piece of tube, so you can kind of break it, rip it, tear it quite easily. So we do have to be careful. It does have its limitations. We can do full 90 degree bends, um, but we do, have a, we do have a bit of a failure rate on those. We've not quite got them nailed yet. Um, but that's probably for another video. So we've got the bender programmed up to do um, on this three inch tube a 25 mil offset. Because on a six inch OD silencer, our offset baffle three inch offset baffle is 25 millimeter offset from the center line. So we need to create a 25 mil step, basically. So we've kind of worked that out in CAD. Um, we use Fusion to just work out what angle we need. And then we know the bend compensation we need for spring back. And it's just working out the distance required between those two bends to give us the length of perforated tube that we need in order to you know, get it the right length and actually get it to fit in that silencer can. Obviously, we do have minimum clamp distances we can work with, so we have to make sure that we're kind of working to those limitations. So we've got the tube loaded in now. The bender's programmed up, ready to go, so it's just a case of bending it. So we've done that first bend, and as you can see, that's uh, compared to kind of cutting at an angle and welding perforated tube together at an angle, it's just a far superior way of doing it. I mean, you don't have to look at like that as a way of doing it and cutting it and welding it side by side to know that, you know, that's far better for performance and actually for the longevity of the internal of the silencer. As soon as you start going and cutting things and welding things actually go inside the silencer you've just opened up a whole world of 
potential unreliability problems and we really want to try and make silencers that you know are going to last a really long time you know, we want to make you know really reliable products so we've done that first bend it's now going to rotate reposition the tube and do that second bend and then we should end up with a perfect 25 millimeter offset we've got both bend angles in here now and if we check that we'll get a 25 millimeter offset which is exactly what we need for those uh those center to offset silencers on the six inch od baffles so i've got a bit of a crude way of measuring it but it works you can see there we have got yeah 24 and a half which i can live with given the crude way of measuring probably not super accurate it's more than accurate enough for us to get that in there and, and make sure that when we finally assemble the silencer and swage them out that you can put tube in there and it goes in perfectly straight and you can put tube in the other end and it comes out perfectly straight which makes fabricating the exhaust a lot easier when you're not dealing with how things kind of hanging all over the place on the wonk so we've got the tube bent up now, the uh, 25 millimeter offsets just two seven degree bends, and then this one is two uh, 11 degree bends, I think. Um, so we kind of bend them up as a standard length. We need realistically a minimum tube length in the bender to allow us to get like a multi axis bend in. So we start out with a 1200 millimeter long piece of tube, and that's kind of what we do for all the offset silencers. So now that we've got the standard length of tube, we've got them bent up, we now need to work out what we're cutting off them. So we start with the 400 millimeter long, and that is the um, first one we did, which is a 25 millimeter offset. So with this one, we need to make sure that we've got enough straight section in either end of the silencer that we can swage it out and you can put a straight piece of tube in because that makes fabricating the silencer so much easier rather than trying to kind of like butt the tube up on the outside it needs to be done that way so if i just measure 400 millimeters straight from the edge of the tube we're only just onto the the kind of bent section at that so obviously there's no way that we can we can cut it there we need to leave ourselves with at least 50 millimeters either end so what we'll do at this point is we'll mark up 100 millimeters from the edge here, which is an easy place to mark at. You know, it's a nice, uh, nice point to work from. That leaves us with a 90 millimeter straight. And then we move that down and then mark a 400 millimeter. So that's where we'd cut the tube at basically we'd cut that there and then cut that there and that gives us that 400 millimeter perforated tube mandrel bent section and then the same again for this one really this one's a bit trickier because it's a 300 millimeter silencer so this is the shortest we offer in offsets and that's because of just the size of clamp length we're working with on the bender we can only really get that two bend section in um, without it becoming a real compromise so this one's a bit trickier we're going to end up with just 40 millimeters left in on this of straight on either e on either end so we know we've got 190 millimeter clamp length so the first thing i would do is come back and mark 50 millimeters from there that's where we'll cut at that gives us a 40 millimeter of straight and then from that point onwards i'll then go and mark our 300 and that gives us 35 millimeters of straight in the other end So we've got our two pieces of tube cut down now so they're basically ready to assemble into silencers so just as a demonstration before we start assembling it of how they actually go i'm sure you can imagine we'll start out with the um, center hole silent uh, center hole baffle in the bottom we then put the perforated tube in with the infill wrap around it and then we have our other baffle which goes on the top just like that obviously it's all uh, not quite long enough because uh, we've got perforated tube poking through the bottom which there wouldn't be but we'll see that as we start to assemble it but you can see how on the inside of the silencer that's kind of 
some offset silencers kind of have like a, just a gap, like an open gap in the middle of the silencer, which is obviously not great for performance. It's also very hard to be consistent with the sound an exhaust makes like that as well. Um, so this is, you know, a far superior way of doing it. You know, it really is. And then of course this, and then of course this eight inch one, it's exactly the same. Um, we'd start out with our center hole box baffle in the bottom. Again, these ones are a lot bigger. Again, it'll look like the tube is short, even though it's not, just because the baffle's poking all the way through the bottom. And then that one will go on top there. So you can see you end up with a much nicer, much, it is, in terms of performance, doing it like that rather than kind of cutting the tube at an angle and welding it back together, it's perforated tube. You're never going to get good welds on it. You can just never guarantee um, welds internal of a silencer. It's just not possible. These silencers are really good if you need to kind of do a, a step down transition or a, a transition to the side on a car, but you also are really space conscious of the silencer itself. So you know you need to get a silencer in, but you also need to make a transition over. So that's where these really come in. They're super handy for that. We use them on things. They're really common. Um, I just think that they're, they're quite common. They just seem to be quite hard to get hold of, especially done with mandrel bent tube. So we spoke about parallel offset silencers and, and what that is, is exactly the same. Um, it's kind of a straight through silencer and we use a straight piece of perforated tube and it's basically just that the perforated tube sits to one side of the silencer all the way through so it's not mandrel bent or anything like that it's just that tube sits to one side of the silencer so that's what we call a parallel it runs straight through on one side of the silencer so again these are really good if you need if you've got a vehicle where you're kind of worried about ground clearance and you need to tuck that silencer up there but you can't tuck the tube up or sometimes you get like little gaps in the underbody of the car where you can fit a silencer up but you maybe don't have the ground clearance to drop it right down it also means that sometimes you can get an actual bigger silencer in where you wouldn't be able to and that's usually the case with these eight inch offsets obviously it's a big silencer but they really do work so on like track cars I always say go for an eight inch, biggest eight inch silencer you can get in, but sometimes just using a center to center straight through silencer, it's quite limiting. So if you can play around with offsets uh, and being able to tuck that silencer up, it can really make a big difference in terms of how easy it is to fabricate an exhaust for any particular car. So once we've got the tube bent, the baffles together and the silencer shell all cut, it's just a case of assembling it like we would our normal silencers, apart from we've got an offset uh, piece of perforated tube in there. So it's just a case of offsetting the um, Acoustafil that goes in there as well. Obviously, we use the really good um, Acoustafil PTX silencer wadding. We don't need any stainless steel mesh with that, 700 degrees capable. So it's just a case of packing that in there nicely, wrapping it around that perforated tube. It really is crucial to get just the right amount in. Too much or not enough, and it's just not gonna work right. So we get that wrapped in there, nice and snug. We tack the top baffle on, weld it up on the positioner as per normal, and then it's just a case of uh, job done if it's a brushed one, or move on to polished if it's a polished silencer. You've now seen us go through that process of tacking the perforated tube into the baffles, wrapping the, ba wrapping the perforated tube with the Acoustafil and assembling the silencer. Um, and then it's a case of doing those uh, TIG welds with the, uh, on the positioner to get that nice uh, pulsed rotary weld look, which is what we want. Uh, you know, nice and consistent, um, reliable welds, which is obviously the most important thing. Um, we can put loads of work into making them look pretty, but if they don't last, um, you know, all that work put in is, uh, is useless. And then obviously the last step, once, uh, once we've welded it, is to stretch out the inside or swage it or expand it. There's loads of different uh, ways to describe how that's done. 
so that it accepts the uh, the OD of the tube. So on the website, we have it as a kind of um, a three inch bore, and that is because it accepts a three inch piece of tube. So um, yeah, that is the last step, just to stretch that out and uh, and make it so it accepts the tube. So yeah, that's the process of uh, making our offset silencers. Um, if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments. If there's anything else you'd like to see a kind of process video on, let us know. Um, we'd be more than happy to do it. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.